I asked Harry why he got interested in the Rubik's Cube, why he wanted to give a presentation on the Rubik's Cube. And he said, I just want to know how it's done. <laughs> Curiosity, enthusiasm, persistence, all of these speakers have this in abundance. You'll notice that. You probably not, I'm sure you noticed it in our first presentation a few minutes ago. You'll notice it in the next three. Harry, tell us about the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so my name is Harry, and I'm a sophomore here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Rubik's Cube, obviously. Um, and how to solve the Rubik's Cube, it's a pretty ambitious title, because uh, I'm not going to actually teach you how to solve one of these in just 15 minutes. Um, it, it takes longer than that, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I hope that'll at least give you a better understanding of, of how they work. Um, so, you're probably wondering what these three pictures have in common. Well, uh, last fall, I was in Mary Poppins, um, and there was a kid in the show with me who was in sixth grade, and I saw him solving a cube. Um, and I was very impressed and thought, if this sixth grader can do it, I definitely could. <laughs> um, and so he pointed me to an online tutorial. I found a cube in my junk drawer <laughs> uh, and went online and figured out how to solve it. Uh, and that was kind of the beginning, and since then I've gotten uh, even more into cubes uh, and trying to solve it as fast as possible. So, the Rubik's Cube was invented in 1974 by a professor of architecture in Budapest, um, patented in 1975. Uh, a toy specialist named Tom Creamer, that sounds like a really awesome job, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he really pushed the first major marketing effort, got it on the market, and then um, it, it had originally been called the Magic Cube, um, but it's not actually magical. So it was renamed the Rubik's Cube for its international release. And I think this is pretty interesting. One of the first advertisements said that the cube had over three billion combinations, but only one solution. Um, this is true, but it actually has way, way, way over three billion uh, combinations. It actually has about, uh, or exactly, 43 quintillion 252 <laughs> combinations. <laughs> so saying it has more than 3 billion is kind of like saying there's uh, just more than one person on Earth. <laughs> and uh, the, to give you an idea of how how massive this number is. Um, if you had a cube for every one of these combinations and stretched them all out, um, they would stretch out 261 light years, uh, all the way to the Columbia constellation, uh, which I've honestly never even heard of. <laughs> it must be far away. <laughs> and Steph so Curry, funny. for him to earn that much money, um, he would have to play basketball another 3.9 trillion years. <laughs> We're just hoping he's able to play in two weeks. <laughs> um, Alright, so uh, before I explain how we get to that really big number, I'm going to talk about some of the anatomy of a cube. There are 26 pieces on here, centers, edges, and corners. Um, there are six center pieces. This is what a cube looks like when it's taken apart. Uh, as you can see, the centers don't move in relationship to each other. Like, the white center, for example, is always opposite the yellow center. Um, the edge pieces, there are 12 edge pieces. Um, each one has two colors. Of, uh, they, of course, do move. Um, and then the, there are eight corner pieces, and each one has three colors. Um, so to find that, the reason we know that number, uh, to find the number of combinations, we will multiply the center combinations, which is one, because they, they're always in the same arrangement, with the corner combinations and edge combinations. And there are two aspects to finding each of these combinations. Um, there is location, which refers to where a piece is on the cube, and orientation, which refers to how that piece is turned. Uh, so now I'm going to take you into how we find each one of these. Uh, beginning with the corners, there are eight corners, and 
if you choose any one corner, uh, that means there are eight places that it could be. Um, then if you choose a second corner, um, for each of those first eight places, that second corner can be in any one of seven places uh, because one of them is occupied by the first corner. Um, then the third corner can be in any six other places, and so on. Um, so th and that, that's just uh, talking about where a piece is on the cube. Um, <coughs> now, because each corner has three sides, it can be turned one of three ways. Um, again, if you look at, think about one corner, there are three ways it can be turned. For each of those three ways, there are another three ways that the next corner can be turned, um, and so on. Except, when you get to the eighth corner, um, as you can see, there's only one possible orientation. Uh, the reason for this is that, essentially, it's a p impossible to turn one corner at a time. Of course, I can go like this with my cube, but there's no way I can get there by actually turning the size of the cube. Um, you can only turn two corners at a time, and that means that when you have seven corners, they can be arranged however you want, but the eighth corner, uh, the ar arrangement or orientation is, is given. Um, so for the location of the corners, the, uh, it's 8 factorial, uh, which is 40,320, and the number of ways that they can be turned is 3 to the power of 7, and we multiply that together to get this number, it's uh, over 88 million, and that's just the ways that the corners can be arranged. Um, so if a cube basically was no corners, it would have this many combinations. Um, now onto the edges, which follows very similar logic. Um, there are 12 edges, so the location and uh, theoretically should be 12 factorial. Um, because the corners have 8 edges and that was 8 factorial. Um, it's actually 12 factorial divided by 2. The reason for that is like, it's really complicated. It'd be a, a different presentation by itself. Um, I'm, I even have trouble understanding it, so I just <laughs> accept that. <laughs> um, on to the orientation of the corners, or, or of the edges, which is exactly the same logic as the corners. There are each edge can be turned one of two ways, um, and there are twelve of them. The orientation of the last one is based on is dependent on the orientation of the first eleven. So it's two to the power of eleven is the number of edge orientations. Multiplying these together, we get um, an even bigger number, four hundred. It's almost five hundred billion. And then we'll multiply that with the number of corner combinations that was calculated uh, a minute ago. And we get that really big number from a few slides ago. I'm not going to waste any more time saying it again. <laughs> yeah, yikes. That's, that's, a, that's a huge number. Uh, why am I telling you that if it is just going to make the cube seem overwhelming? And I know I think most, if not all of us, have felt this way in math class, especially <laughs> if you've been in geometry honors with David. <laughs> that, was, that was very unkind. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, um, I'm, and next I'm going to give you an idea of how, uh, how we actually narrow that number down into actually solving the cube. And, uh, one of the so there are several different methods of solving the cube, and all of them they're they're all a little bit different. Um, one thing they all use algorithms. What an algorithm is is just a way. It's something a set of moves that you do to the cube that changes it in some way. Um, and I, I don't really have time to explain much about those. I'm just going to demonstrate one quickly um, to turn these two corners. There's an algorithm. Um, that I have memorized, and as you can see, the, the cube is totally solved, except for these two corners, which I've just turned. Um, I can use that same algorithm to get them back. Um, and so, <laughs> so that, that's kind of, uh, it's through a bunch of things like that that the cube actually gets solved. Uh, the method I'm going to talk about is known as CFOP. This stands for um, 
the crop solving the cross. Um, actually, uh, can I have um, Patrick? Do you want to mix this up for me really quick? Um, and, that, and then I'll demonstrate how to solve it. You solve the cross, then the first two layers, then you orient the last layer, and then you permute the last layer. Oh, um, okay. so, and I'm going to show you what each of these steps does to that, that big number. Um, do you have it pretty good? Yes. All right. So first, the cross. Um, what that is, is you just pick a side. I always start on the white side. Um, but you can choose any one, it doesn't matter. And you just place in the four edge pieces on that side. Um, like this. Um, <laughs> the, it may be hard for some of you to see in the back, but this is a good, another good image of it. Um, it's just four edges that are placed in. And it's a really simple step um, that, that I'm, I'm sure anyone can learn how to do. Uh, and what this actually, this was our original number of com combinations, but only about um, 455 trillion of those have the cross solved. So just by doing this, we've narrowed down by a great deal. <laughs> Although it still, it still looks pretty mixed up. So we'll continue. To, the next step is the first two layers. Um, which, uh, and what that means is that you're getting two layers of the cube completely solved. And Two layers are completed, and uh, that's that's another step. Technically, it's intuitive. Um, <laughs> that, what that means, it does that doesn't mean that you can figure it out by yourself. I certainly did not. Um, but it me what it means is there are no real algorithms involved. There's, it's not like there's a long set of steps I'm doing. Um, it's really just a couple of very short steps, um, and that's also. It did take me a while to learn, but once you get it, that's another very easy step. And if you remember, we <laughs> already narrowed down this number. And actually, of these combinations, only um, about 62,000 wow. have two layers solved. So yeah, that's, that's some major progress. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're on to the last layer. We only have one more layer to solve. Um, and the first step is to orient this layer. Um, which just means making sure that all of the yellow pieces are on the yellow side, uh, like like this. And if you look around at the sides, you can see that they're not really in place. But the the first step is to just orient that, and then you move them around well. And and this does use um, so a couple of complicated algorithms that are definitely worth looking up if you're interested. Um, and what does that do to our number of combinations? Uh, well, we already got down to here, and of those, only 288 have the last layer oriented. Um, so, and if you remember in the beginning, I was the number of permutations was determined by location and orientation. Well, now it's just location, because every piece has, is in the correct orientation. All the yellows are on the yellow side, um, and we just need to figure out where they go, which is the final step. of the last layer, uh, just moving the pieces around to the correct spot. Um, we've gone down from more than 43 quintillion 
uh, to 455 trillion, 62,288, and now we're down to only one common permutation that looks like this. Um, so that's about it. Uh, I just uh, want you um, the the when you first when you're first thinking about the cube, the possibilities seem endless, but as it turns out, they're only two, about 261 light years long. Um, <laughs> but we, we can very quickly um, shorten this. And of, of course, um, unless you already knew, I don't think anyone here could now orient or permute the last layer or even some of the first steps would not be easy for you. Uh, but I just want to give, wanted to give you an idea that they are pretty simple. Um, and if you want to learn how to do this, uh, there are um, a bunch of tutorials online, uh, maybe even as many as 43 quintillion. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know about that, but uh, look it up online or in a book or something. Uh, that learn from. And what I found was that I, I learned how to do it from experts, from people online who were really knew what they were talking about it. And once they just once I just learned a couple of simple moves or tricks, um, a, I was able to figure out a bunch more by myself. So just for me, kind of getting the basics um, really opened up this whole world of possibilities. Uh, thank you.